Now, of course, everyone has specific needs for their isometric title blocks, and I'm sure that you are no exception. And for the most part, you pretty much do have much control over the output of your isometrics. So let's take a look at how we can actually set up that title block so it can best resemble your company's needs or what your wishes are. So let's go ahead back up to our project manager, and we'll go back into the project setup. When we get into the project setup, we're going to go back down to the isometric drawing styles and or the settings, uh, I should say. And then we're going to go all the way down this list where it says title block and display. And it's from this area where we're going to be able to make changes to the isometric title block. So let's go over a few points uh, dealing with the isometric title block. And let's, you can define the title block for each isometric style that you have. You do have control over the placement and display for the following items. Your drawing area, this is going to include overall plot area and your north arrow setup. Any attributes such as project data and client information, that could be company name, primary contacts, any tables including the bill of materials, cut piece list, weld list, and spool list, themes that let you specify where components appear, that could be layer setup, uh, and what elements are included or excluded. And after clicking setup title block button in project setup, you can manipulate the title block directly, or you can use the tools in the contextual ribbon that you have. And click on ISO style, uh, actually we'll go down to the title block and display. So to be able to, once we do that, we can go ahead into the part that says uh, set up title block. And then once you're in there, you're going to see that you have a new ribbon that comes up. And the first one we're going to look at is the ISO themes. So once we bring up the ISO themes, we're going to take a look at dimension style. So if you notice, we have a little drop down right there on dimension styles. You can select the style from the drop down list. You can also click the auto. AutoCAD dimension style button to create new styles, set the current styles, modify styles, so on and so forth. And if you've ever used AutoCAD before, I'm sure that you've seen this environment before that when you bring it up, you can set up a dimension style and it's pretty straightforward on doing that. Now let's take a look at multi-leader style. We also have some drop downs on here. And uh, you can select the style from the drop down list. And once again, you can also click the AutoCAD multi leader style button to create new styles, set the current style, modify styles. And we'll just take a look at that one. And once again, it is much like what you have seen in your regular AutoCAD settings. Taking a look at the table style, we'll go ahead, look at the drop down there. You select the style from the drop down list. You can also use the button that we have uh, demonstrated a couple of times, and you'll see that it's very similar as well. Set current, new or modify an existing table. Uh, also create your own. All of these, you always have the option to create a new one. And taking a look at textile, we'll go ahead and do a drop down there. And once again, you can also use your AutoCAD button here to where you can modify or create new styles. Now to the right you have a layer setup where you can choose uh, on which layer on which layer you would like the various uh, parts of your isometric drawing whether it be fittings annotations etc you can use the drop down and select which layer you would like that on now you also have a layer properties manager uh, button here and this button is going to function exactly like your layers do in regular AutoCAD, where you can go in and control all of your layers, whether it be by freezing or locking a layer, turning a layer on and off, picking a line weight, color, uh, plot styles, so on and so forth. So whenever you finish that, you can always uh, set this to hide. Remember, if you wanted to auto hide, I'm just going to go ahead and close that out right now. When you're done with this, you can either OK or OK if you've made changes. I haven't. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel it. And then to get back to where you're setting up your properties, all you need to do is click this X. And now that's going to take you back into your project setup. Now let's take a look at the steps to configure an override theme. So let's go ahead back to the project setup tree and expand our isometric drawings. And we're going to go back into the title block and display. 
we'll go ahead here for uh, make sure you select the sheet or the format that you want to override you want to create the theme override then let's go ahead to the setup title block now once we do that you're going to see your title block come up and then you're also going to see this uh, specialized ribbon which is especially for dealing with your title block and you'll see that you do have a panel that says themes and a tool that takes you into ISO themes now if you want to go ahead and override a theme you can pick up choose this tab that says override themes then go ahead and pick the theme that you want to override now if you go into where the layer overrides are you can if you you'll see that you have various layers here and then you can go ahead and do the override by picking the layer that you do want to associate with that now you also have the option to put everything on one layer so if you go ahead and click that then you can go ahead and you can pick the default layer that you want to put everything on so then but remember, if you want to be able to adjust this, you have to go ahead and uncheck this option that says put everything on one layer. OK, once you've made those changes, you go ahead and you can say OK. And then if there's any other changes you need to make, that's fine. Go ahead and make those there. But when you're finished, go ahead and return to your project setup by clicking on the X here in the close panel. And that'll take you back to the project setup area. And now you've just done a configuration for an override theme. We can add or modify title block attributes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the procedure that we can go through to get that done. Once again, we'll go ahead and expand our isometric drawing settings and our project setups. And we'll swing over to the title block and display. Make sure you've chosen the ISO style that you want to edit this for and then go ahead to your setup title block. Once you do that, as usual, we'll get our specialized ribbon for dealing with setting up the title block. And then you'll see a tool here in the attributes panel, which is going to allow you to make your title block attributes. You'll get this panel that's gonna come up or this dialog box, and then you can pick the category of the attribute that you want. Perhaps it is project data where you want information on the project, or perhaps information on the client, whatever it may be, or you can just switch to all and then get all of the information at once. I'll go ahead and I'm going to just change this to client information. And I'll go ahead and just do this for primary contact. You can pick a style here with your dropdown, and that would be such as your text style. How do you want this justified? Whether you want it justified to the left, to the center, to the right, and then you can pick a text height. Once you have done that, all you have to do is click place in here. And then you can decide where in here that you do want that. You uh, remember this is AutoCAD, so you could use any of your AutoCAD functionalities to place this. Perhaps you wanted to place that at an intersection. So let me just go ahead and choose that. And then you see where I have the intersection of the two lines. Go ahead and it places that. Now you bring your right back, you can do some more, or you can go ahead and close it. And then just go ahead and close your block editor. And if this is something that you want to save, which I'm not going to save this right now, but then you would go ahead and do save changes to the title block. You can use an optional line designation table that specifies a worksheet name, header row, and line number column to pass pipeline data to the isometric drawing. You can use a line designation table to specify data such as design pressure, design temperature, and so on, and these can be used as attributes in the isometric title block. Typical data in a user-defined line designation table might include service, maximum pressure and maximum temperature, design pressure, and design temperature. That being said, let's take a look at how we can get this information as an attribute into your title block. Make sure that you've opened up your isometric drawing settings within your project setup and that you've chosen title block and display. And then we go ahead to our tool that says setup title block once you've chosen what style ISO that you're going to adjust here. Wait for your uh, ribbon to populate 
And then what you want to do is you want to choose title block attributes. In the title block attributes, you're going to see that there is an LDT setup for your line designation table. You need to choose where your line designation table, that's going to be an XLS or XLSX file. I'll go ahead and locate mine, and then I'll open it. And then you'll see that you can pick from a worksheet name if you have more than one worksheet there. And then you can also pick the header row of what you want. Uh, you can view the line designation table. And then we can go ahead and we can place this as an attribute. So we'll go back to our Add Attributes tab on here. In the Attribute category, what we want to select is the LDT Attributes. Pick the name that you want here. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that as PNID number. And then you can pick a text style, a justification. And then you can also modify the text height if you wish. Then go ahead and place it where you would like into your uh, title block. And once you've done that, you can continue to add other attributes if you wish. You and you're finished, go ahead and hit close. And then go ahead and close out the block editor. If you wish to save changes to the title block, go ahead and do that now. Another area that needs to be configured is the title block drawing area. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at our project setup again and make sure that we are expanded in the isometric drawing settings. And we can take a look at the title block and display panel. We'll go ahead, make sure we are adjusting the correct uh, ISO style that we want. I'm going to stick with check and CB. And then I'm going to go ahead and go for my setup title block. Now, as you can see, I have some color coded areas here. And we have different areas that we can adjust. This green area here is a draw area. If we click once in the green box, we can use these grips here to modify the draw area. You can even stretch this over. So it's very much like normal AutoCAD grips to be used, but you can use those grips to adjust each area once you have it chosen. Now, another thing you'll want to do is establish a no draw area if you have need of that. And what that's going to do is if you want to select a area within your drawing area where you do not want any of the isometric to spill over, you have a tool that you can do that with. If you'll go back into your ribbon and you'll see here you have a no draw area tool. So all you have to do is activate that and then you can draw a rectangular shape which will go into there. You can also use your snaps. And now if you want to see, if you look at area visibility, it'll show you with dotted lines exactly where your draw area and no draw area is going to show up. So you'll see the kind of uh, the figure that the polyline looking figure, that will be the only area where you will actually see piping at because we designated this rectangle here as a no draw area. If you wish to place a table, whether it be bill of materials, cut piece, weld list, or spool list, uh, if you look in the ribbon, you'll see a table placement and setup panel. Click the table that you want and draw it on the drawing. And we usually place this in the blue area here, uh, around the area where you see that the bill of materials is in right now. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and put a weld list in. It's going to ask me to specify a corner point and another corner point. And you'll see now that the weld list is included on the title block. You'll notice that this title block does have a north pointing arrow on it. You have the option to have the north pointing in the upper left, upper right, lower left, or lower right corners. We're going to go ahead and add a north arrow in here so that you can see the procedure of doing so. Uh, before I add a north arrow, I'm going to add a no draw area so that my isometric will never spill over into the uh, area where my north arrow is. I'll go ahead and add that area. As you can see, I now have a no draw area here. And then once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and go to place north arrow. 
It's going to ask me, do I want the default north going to the upper left, upper right, lower left, or lower right? I'll go ahead and leave it in the upper left. And then I'll go ahead and locate the north arrow in the no draw area. And you'll see that I have a north arrow now, which is pointing to the upper left. If I feel that I've reached that in error and I want to go ahead and change that, all I have to do is uh, select the north arrow. Let me see if I can get that without getting any of the hatching. You have a substitution arrow here. And then we just go ahead and change that to the upper right. And now you'll see that your arrow is there. And of course, this is merely an AutoCAD uh, block. So if we want to move this over, You can move this in any direction that you want if you want to more strategically locate that north arrow. It's as easy as that. Don't forget, all of your regular AutoCAD functions generally work in plant. No different for editing your title block. Now let's configure a table layout. This is going to apply to the bill of materials, cut piece weld, and spool list tables. So we're back at our project setup. We'll make sure that we're on title block and display. We'll go ahead and invoke the setup title block command and we'll get our contextual ribbon we're going to go off to the panel that says table placement and setup you'll see that's where we can create our various tables and then here is your table setup so you can go ahead and pick a table type here uh, you've got cut piece weld list and spool list we're going to go back to the bill of materials here uh, when you use the bill of materials you're going to get some extra choices here whether it be simple bill of materials grouped with category titles or grouped with independent columns so now if you notice you have pipe fittings olets etc and if you want to independently be able to show these then you're going to have to use uh, grouped with independent columns now if you have columns that you kind of want to rearrange you want them in different order you can simply hold down a left click and then drag them over and you can rearrange them that way you can add columns. Everything is categorized here, uh, starting off with piping and equipment. Then you can go into specific equipment or fasteners or pipe run uh, components. And then you can choose the appropriate property from there to apply there. We'll just go ahead one with the, uh, we'll put a blower. And then I'll say that I want to add a manufacturer. And then you'll see the manufacturer column is now added. Now, if we want to change the order of our rows, we can right click on that and you can move it up or you can right click and move it down. So that's kind of some of the things that you can do to set up the table and uh, your table setup for your bill of materials. Now the last section that we'll go over right here is going to be to uh, check out some further settings that you can do with your bill of materials table. We'll go ahead from the same uh, dialog box. We'll click on the tab that says settings and we'll go ahead and choose how we want to sort our bill of materials. We can do it by size or by description. Now right here you can check or clear this uh, create separate fabrication and erection table settings. If you do check it then you can have the fabrication items on top or you can have the erection items on top. You cut back elbows. If you choose that, you will show cut back elbows as separate line items. And then you can choose if you want to add a description suffix or prefix. You'll also get this little preview right here. Fixed length pipes work much the same. You can choose quantity or length for your report. And then you can also show the fixed length pipes as separate line items, adding a description suffix or a description prefix. And of course, your preview will be right here. Now, you can also clear or use the custom description checkbox. I'll go ahead and check it. And if you do check it, you'll have to use this button over here so that you can select the AutoCAD Plant 3D long description style. That's the .lds file that you want. And this file will set the format for all descriptions in the bill of materials. So once you've done that, all you need to do is check OK. And if you have no other changes to make, then you can go ahead and return to your project setup.